Hi, welcome to this puzzle I was working on with my incoming freshman algebra students. Over the summer, I presented this to them. It's a pretty famous puzzle where you have this pattern that's developing. You have figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four, and you have a few questions here. I've condensed it to three, but there, there's more than this. But I, I thought I'd just bring it down to this. This should be enough. How is the pattern growing? How many in figure 10? Because we have 1, 2, 3, 4. How many in 10? And then what is that general rule? And in this video, I wanted to share, you, share with you some of my thoughts and how I came about the rule. So we have uh, 1, 2. So how is it growing? That's the first question. And I see that the, here's the, this right here is here. And these two are here. And then at, on figure three, there's three. And then there's two and there's one. And in four, this four, three, two, one. And then what I thought is, hey, I could put this and put it in, take that and put it in there, and I'd have a square. Further, I can take this and put it into here and finish that square. And I could take this and put it in here and take that square. So I, you know, I was, uh, was having a little bit of trouble with that part because, yes, for figure four, it could be whatever figure three is plus four. But the idea is you create a rule. So I can say uh, that that's the ultimate goal. So if I say how many in figure 87, you could plug your... 87 into my rule and it would tell you how many squares are in there. So how it's growing? Well, uh, this figure four would be four plus three plus two plus one. At least that's what I saw. And by the way, I urge you to pause the video and see what you come up with for answering these three questions. Anyway, moving on, figure three, that'd be three plus two plus one. And figure 2 is 2 plus 1. And figure 1 is just 1. So, so we can kind of see that's working backwards there. Um, further, I could see that this is equal to uh, uh, 10. This green one is equal to 6. And the blue one is equal to 3. And this first one is equal to 1. And by the way, uh, how about I move all this over here. And what about, uh, let me see if I can put uh, this in white. But what about figure 0? How many would that have? Uh, well, to answer that, I first... Or the next thing I did really is I just took this. Um, let me let me erase this stuff here because it, there was a lot that I did with this. Now I'm going to use that data still though, it's still important data, and I'm going to record it. So if I have the first one, th uh, this one had uh, one, this one had three, this one had uh, six, and this one had uh, ten. So if I were to write ordered pairs for each of these, it would be figure one had one square, figure two had three squares, figure three, three had six squares, and figure four had ten squares. Oh, so what we can see here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to move all these up a little bit too. Oops, just that. Oh, I can't just move that one. So what's important here is I can also see this. The difference between these two from one to three, that difference it increased by two. This from three to six that increased by three, and from six to ten that increased by four. And you could see, ooh, this increased by two, this increased by three, four, the next one's gonna increase by five, so the next one's 15. But if I move 
backwards here to get back to figure zero. This goes down four, this goes down three, this goes down two, this needs to go down one. So I could then say figure zero would have to go down by one, which means that would be zero, zero. All right, so I'm going to now move this big figure away here. I don't need that right now. And I'm gonna focus on uh, what I got going on here. Look at this. This is important. I'm going to move this aside too. These questions I'm going to move aside. And all this stuff's going to get moved aside here. Because take a look at this. Let, let me clean this up and show you what's happening. Now, the Y coordinates here. Remember, we can have uh, X comma Y. The first, this is the figure number and this is the uh, number of squares, okay? So the first number, such as this, this is our figure number, and this is the number of squares. The figure number two had three squares. The figure number three had six squares, and figure four had 10 squares. Uh, now, if I just look at the y's, just from here to one, to three, to six, to 10, I had that up before. So this goes up one. This went up uh, two. This, from three to six, that went up three. And from six to 10, that went up four. Okay, the, I already showed you that. But take a look at this. That goes up one. This goes up one. This goes up one. The fact that we have to go too deep the difference here and the difference again, that makes this a quadratic relationship, quadratic function, whatever it is. That means that in our general rule, it's going to be an x squared. Okay? If if it were just if we could if we could have stopped here and that would have been a constant difference the same difference plus two plus two plus two plus two or whatever that would have been uh oops that would have been called linear and that would have been a straight line and it just would have been x in our uh relationship there so that's something to keep in track of this is definitely a quadratic relationship uh or you know when we make the equation quadratic equation quadratic function, whatever you want to call it, okay? Now, that was my first hint. Next, what I did is I took Desmos. This is my favorite, Desmos. And what I did is I plugged in all of these points, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 6, 4, 10. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so what we can see here is all these points here are, they exist here. You can see the 2, 3, and the 3, 6, and the 4, 10. 2, 3, 3, 6, 4, 10, and they are here. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring this aside, and I want to put it up front, which I'm going to do there right now. This is going to the front, and I'm going to make this larger, and we're going to take a look at what's happening here. So, I told you this is quadratic, which means this is going to, if it, if it were linear, we would end up with a straight line. But when I look at this, it doesn't really look like a straight line. If I were to look at this, it looks kind of curved. This, uh, if I were going to, uh, it looks like a curved line right there. And quadratics do this. Quadratics make these things called a U-shaped curve or a parabola. So I know this, this is parabolic uh, because I already have distinguished that this is going to be an x squared, a cubic thing. Now, there's going to be stuff after this, and I hasn't. I, uh, we could dress this up in other, but that's the basic structure. So I'm going to uh, erase this stuff, and I'm going to show you further what I did. Now, because, uh, let's see. Um, what did I do? I, I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I was doing this. So in the first, where's my, where's my, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, 
when I was looking at this before, I saw, I think I showed you, I saw that this is 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And this was 3 plus 2 plus 1. Okay, and if I did the next one, that would be 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Okay, and then further, what I saw was, uh, let, let me do let me do one more. So, so the next one would be 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Okay, with these, it's a little bit easier to see. So I saw, hey, 4 plus 1, that's 5. And 3 plus 2, that's also 5. And so... I had 5 times 3, right? So this sum is going to be 15 because I have 5, 5, and 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Now, how many how many numbers do I have in this? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I was thinking I have about half as many, about half as many 5s as there are numbers. So there's 5 numbers. And I have about half, you know, I end up with three fives. Now with this one, I have um, one, two, three. Because so five plus one is six, and four plus two is six, and I have six. So I have half as many sixes as I have numbers, right? I have six numbers, and I have one, two, three sixes. So I was thinking about half as many of these. So basically, what I'm getting at is... I started to adjust this. I was focused on this. And I thought, okay, uh, how about I do y equals x squared? Okay, I know that's a parabola. And it turns out I'm getting kind of close with this because I got this. It's kind of close. It, it hits that and it hits that, but it misses these here. So I was thinking, well, how about I try to take half of this? And uh, for reasons I'm not going to tell you really, I just thought that. How about I take half? How does that look? And it looks like, ooh, I kind of like this. It hits that, it misses that, but it looks like this distance, It's it looks like it contours it quite well. If I could just shift this line over, that would be good. And I know a horizontal shift means... I have to, as weird as it is, I have to subtract. Is it subtract? No. No. I have to. Yeah, if I want to move it left, I have to go the opposite of what I think. I have to add. And then, here's the weird part. X divided by 2. And I nailed it right there. And I looked at that. I was messing around. I have no idea what gave me that idea of X over 2. I just knew I had to shift it over. And it hit it. And so this is the general rule. Uh, right here, that is the rule that I'm looking for. You take your squared divided by 2 plus half of the number. Let me explain. Uh, I'm going to... Oops. Let's see. Where's my stuff? So if I look at this here, uh, I'm going to write down my rule. Uh, the rule. Let me erase all this stuff. So the rule is uh, y equals x squared over 2 plus x over 2. Does it work? So figure 1. That means I put 1 in for x squared over 2 plus 1 in for x again. 1 over 2. 1 squared is 1, that's 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. Hey, you got 1 square. So you put 1 in, that one's there, and this one is how many squares you got. So figure 2. Uh, that would be 2 squared, because 2 goes in for x over 2, plus 2 in for x again over 2. So 2 squared is 4, 4 over 2, plus 2 over 2. Uh, oh. Uh, plus 2 over 2, and 4 plus 2 is 6 over 2, which is 3. So I put 2, 2 in, and actually 2 is going in for both of these places here, and I get 3 squares out. 
one more because this is looking great. Maybe I'll skip ahead to four. So four, that'd be four squared over two plus four over two. And so that four is guiding that. And that's 16 over 2 plus 4 over 2. 16 plus 4 is 20 over 2, which is 10. And that's how many squares. So my next question is, okay. So I stumbled upon the answer. Why does this work? And I believe I have the reason why. This is my rationale. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, let me erase all this stuff here create some space. So uh, first off, if I were to, yeah, I think I'll just shift this over. Oh, nope. Oh my goodness. I have to uh, separate these here. Uh, edit, ungroup them. And it's okay. So this is my rule. Uh, this right here, you might know that when you have something to second power, that's called x squared. You ever wonder why it's called squared? That little two, that little two for an exponent, why is it called squared? Well, think about this. One. Uh, one squared is one. That's because you have one square. Uh, two squared, that's two times two, which is four, which means you would have one, two, three, four. You can make a four, uh, a square out of four little squares. Uh, three squared. Uh, that's nine. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to do this fast, but you can make a square out of nine of these. And then uh, four squared. Okay, last one I'm going to do. So four squared is 16. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's a six, it's a square out of 16. So all these are known as perfect squares. Okay. So that means what this is telling me is if I take half of a square, here's a square and I take half of it plus half of the number that I'm working on, I got it. Let me show you that in action. So what I saw is this. I saw, boom, 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 boom. So if this entire thing is a square, this is half the square, okay? And that's what this is here. So if I, this right here, this spot right here is half the square, there's half the square, plus half the number I got. Well, the number is two, and half of two is one. And look at that, that and that. This half of this, this little square and this other half of the little square is one. So it's one, uh, okay, so half the square is two, plus one is three. You have three squares in this one. This one, half the square. Half the square, what do I have? I have one, two, three, four and a half. So I'll write 4.5. So for this bottom half, I have 4.5. And then what do I have for the other side? It's the other half of the number. So three, half of three is 1.5. Here's one and then half, 0.5. So 4.5 plus 1.5 is uh, six, and that's the total. See, that's what's this happening. We have half of a square. That's half this square. And then I'm taking half of the number that I'm working on. Half of this number is 1.5. So does it work for this one? Half of this. So this entire square here would be 16. But take half of that is eight. I should have eight on the bottom half. One, two, three, four, five, six, Here's half, seven, half, eight. So there's eight here. Okay, that's half the square plus half of the figure number that I'm working on, half of four. So eight, nine, because there's another half, 10, another half right there. That's the trick. That's the whole thing. That is the solution and why it works. Uh, now, there was another part to this question. 
And uh, here's uh, another part. If could you could you make a square out of 190? If you had 190 squares, could you make one of these shapes here? Could you make one of these stair shapes? Uh, well, this is what you would do. You take the 190 and you use the formula, which is x squared divided by 2 plus x over 2, and uh, you solve it. Now, this is a bunch of algebra. Uh, and quadratic formula. Hey, quadratic formula, you know, is quadratic relationship here, so it makes sense. Uh, what I did is I multiplied everything by 2. So I multiplied this side by 2 and this side by 2. And so that leaves me with x squared plus x, because these all would cancel out, right? Because I'm distributing the 2 to each of these. And uh, 390 times 2 is, uh, 190 times 2 is 380. And then I thought, eh, I'll just subtract 380 from both sides. And I got 0 equals x squared plus x minus 380. Now, what would be nice is if I could, you know, factor like that. But I have no idea what the... Oh, wait. I would have to know two numbers that multiply to 380 that are one apart. I wonder if I could do this. 380? I don't know. I'm thinking uh, 19 times 2, but that's all I could think of. So, nope. And once once I don't know, I just scrap that part, and I just, as unfun as the quadratic formula is, here it is. It's uh, the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you're an algebra student, you already know what this is. I won't go that heavy into it, but I'll just fill it in. Uh, the opposite of b is negative 1 plus or minus square root b squared, which would be 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 380. Okay, I need 380. 380 times 4 is 0, uh, 2, uh, 3, 12, 1, 15, 20. That's 15, 20. Square root, negative 1, plus or minus. Oh, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. Uh, the square root of 15, 20, that was... Um, Oh, I knew I made a little mistake here. Uh, I have to erase just a little bit. That's 1521 because I didn't do that 1, right? Because that's 1 minus all this, and that negative times negative is a positive, so it's 1 plus all that. Okay, so this then ends up being negative 1 plus or minus. Uh, the square root of 1521 is 39. I looked it up over 2, and then we have... Oh, I can't erase that. Why can't I erase that? There we go. Uh, so it's, I could do, I have two choices. I can have negative 1 minus 39 over 2, or I can have negative 1 plus 39 over 2. And this one would give me a negative answer, so that means that's out. Uh, that's, that, that's not going to work at all. I can't have a negative answer. That doesn't make sense. So I have to have a positive answer. And so negative 1 plus 39 is 38 over 2, which is 19. Ha! Step 19. So yes, if you start if if you're looking for 190 squares, you would have to have step 19. So what it should be is um, the 19 plus 18 plus 17 plus 16 plus 15 plus 14 plus 13, plus 12, plus 11, plus 10, plus 9, plus 8, plus 7, plus 6, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, uh, plus 2, plus 1, equals 190. I challenge you to check. I'm pretty sure that's right. But there you go. So that's the whole thing. Uh, stairs to squares, and, or squares to stairs, whatever it is. And there's the puzzle and everything behind it. I hope you enjoyed it because I certainly did. Bye.